how authentic is data obtained from Altmetric? So it's quite authentic, Upendra. And uh, let's discuss all of this at the end. And uh, let's go on to the next um, question. And Rajat is asking, are Altmetric and Plumix free? No, they are uh, not it's free. It's lovely to meet you again for this webinar. And today we'll be talking about alt metrics for uh, the evaluation of journal societal impact. So last time we went into the role of social media and academia, but today we'll dig slightly deeper and uh, there's a lot to learn and know about the definition and the various platforms available, um, the unique coverage by each uh, alt metrics provider, and the golden question whether it correlates with citations or not and how we can increase our old metric scores. So um, in brief about old metrics, to go over it once more, that attention to research uh, from non-traditional sources is captured by old metrics. And this includes a wide variety of sources, which uh, may be unconventional, like apart from journal articles, it includes social media, blog posts, news items, or policy documents. And these are the new indicators of research impact, which may complement but not replace the traditional metrics. So there are more broader attention of uh, bro uh, a more broader um, metric for measuring the impact of research. And why do we need it? So basically, uh, if you look at the attention our research gets, then um, uh, the first mention on social media may come as early as few hours or even minutes as soon as the article is online. But if you look at the conventional metrics, they take months or sometimes years to accrue. And this uh, takes a very long time. And sometimes some years down the line, uh, the researcher may have changed interests or, or maybe in a new post may not be interested in that as much at that point. So in this fast paced world, we need a faster metric. And uh, this uh, term was coined by Jason Cream, who's a uh, founder of Impact Story, one of the leading providers of all metrics course uh, for individual researchers. And uh, so this was way back in 2010, as you see, and it started with a tweet, uh, rightly so, um, as we can feel, and you'll end up downloading it or viewing it, or if it's a video, video play, so this again, not captured by all metrics. So this is unique about the institutions like publishers, libraries, and universities, both all metrics and comics, while impact story is more for an individual researcher who wants to include all metrics in the CV. So uh, here it will sync with the various uh, social media and uh, or uh, the other platforms and will gather the impact of an individual and uh, downloadable in a CV format. So this is a web-based tool. Um, which individually uh, records the individually assigned permanent identifiers, so DOIs, URLs, comment IDs, everything related to your name and links to ORSID ID or PubLons. So all of it can be clubbed together. Uh, even SlideShare, if you've uploaded uh, your slides in SlideShare, GitHub, datasets, uh, archives, all of these are recorded by Impact Story. While all metrics, as we talk about, uh, the advantages covers a wide variety of blogs, so more than 8,000 blogs, apart from the DOIs, archives, uh, Repec is for uh, economic fellows, and then uh, handles and cover IDs. Also, uh, the advantage of the alt metrics is you can query uh, certain dates. So, what was the alt metrics score of this article on this date, or a specific to a journal? So, it's a database where you can search it, just like PubMed, restricted to a journal, a publisher, or a particular platform, and also where the mesh ID, so medical subject um, headings. So, uh, and these are downloadable as CSV files, which can then be analyzed uh, conveniently. And for Plumex, uh, digging deeper, it captures these so-called artifacts uh, like videos, audios, supposed to record a talk, it's on YouTube, so this will be captured by Plumex. Book chapters, which are again not captured by a lot of these other clinical trials, uh, or if there are new trials that are registered in the protocols list, your previous uh, work with that would be counted as well. So it works with RCID and the other IDs and uh, even painted numbers, as I said earlier. So uh, it includes various aspects. So now come to the most important question, which uh, we all know and somehow like instinctively, whether we like social media or not, some of you will like to believe that, yes, uh, all metrics would correlate with citations, but some of you will be like, of course they do not. So depending on whichever group you are in, we'll today look at the evidence 
and um, um, the answer is not really simple. Uh, could be a yes or no. It's a complicated relationship depending on a lot of factors. So all metrics typically measure the attention your article is getting, and uh, that may depend on a lot of other factors. So the covariates can include the journal impact factor. For example, if I'm publishing in science, more people are likely to read it because everyone thinks science is a great journal, which of course it is, but um, there will be a competent benefit uh, added up because of the uh, impact factor of the journal. While if it is an obscure journal, even if the research is good, then it is uh, less likely to be noticed. In times, this publication is not a thing because uh, the longer an article has been around, the longer the, site, the higher the citation count would be, as we saw earlier. So the correlation between all metrics score and citation would obviously depend um, on the times this publication. Also, what is your source of all metrics? So who is reading your research? Who's giving it attention? Is it an academic? Yes, uh, we are 20, 30 people of us here. Maybe maybe um, some of uh, all of us are academics. So if we read an article, there's a high probability that we're going to cite it because we're, we're aware of this kind of research. And uh, but if there is a group of school kids who comes across it or, or uh, clinicians who are not into research, then it's less likely to be cited. So of course, uh, who is reading your research? Like people have shown that if it is published in Mendeley, uh, where it mostly researchers, then there's a better correlation. And then the clusters of attention and cycle of change is a very interesting concept and we'll talk about it. What, so this is the goal in question and the citations correlate um, most with access statistics. So, um, and here the correlation is a moderate and uh, some studies have shown weak correlation with overall citation rate, but with access statistics it's around 0.4 to 0.5 based on the different studies. So um, if a URL is clicked or if there are PDF downloads or HTML clicks or XML clicks, then those are uh, correlating better with citations. And of course, bookmarking with various services, service providers like Mendeley, they correlate with level of science citations. So uh, if you look at the top 100 uh, publications as measured by all metrics and suppose the field of inflammatory demyelinating disease, then uh, the authors of this paper looked at the number of articles per year, which uh, fulfilled, uh, which, which, uh, which were the top publications measured by all metrics, so which could uh, cross a certain threshold of all metric score. And as you can see in the earlier years, there were very few number of articles who fulfilled that criteria. While after 2014, there was some sort of digital revolution in that number of articles gradually gone up. So um, definitely uh, attention to science on digital platforms has gone up with uh, the wider use of smartphones and the World Wide Web. Uh, and of course, uh, with this pandemic, probably things will change. Also, as we said, uh, a higher journal impact factor may also lead to a higher algorithmic attention score. If you go on like Instagram, which is not typically a scientific platform, but your friend has uh, followed the account of NEGM, then yeah, the, the people do suffer from the fear of missing out. You may just follow it as well. But yes, I should be aware of the research coming on NEGM. But then if there is a Instagram account of another journal which is not that popular, then you may not follow it. You know, so um, so there is a common in that journal impact factor may mean higher attention score. Like here is a, as you see the authors of this paper, they look at the altmetric attention score and the journal impact factor, and there was a weak but significant correlation. So uh, it is also important to know that all metric attention score may not necessarily mean uh, it's great scientific quality uh, because uh, attention can also be bad attention as we all would agree. So, um, so looking at this uh, paper, another important aspect of citation rate was the time passed since publication across a number of years that have gone by. If it's been longer, then there would be more and more citations. And the authors of this paper conducted an analysis on the articles published in Animal Symptomatic Disease, which is one of the leading uh, rheumatology journals. And uh, they said that 10% of the variability in citation numbers could be explained by the time passed since publication. So the longer the time, the more were the, the 
weakness, it was the variability, and additional 4.7% was explained by all metrics. So all metrics may have some sort of a relation with the, the citation numbers, but it's not entirely contributive. And uh, clinical science articles have better all metric attention scores than basic or translation articles. Now let's look at it critically. Suppose we are uh, you're on Twitter, uh, it's uh, evening, it's off work hours, and you're just browsing through some feed, and there are three different articles which come up. So one is an editorial and something interesting, a debate. You click on it, you go through it, it's a short article. One is a clinical science, so you look at the abstract quickly. One is a basic science, hard or suppose it talks about in silico modeling of COVID-19 and the receptors and the pockets where it fits in. What do you want to go through it? So maybe it's more challenging and also the expertise of the people would be narrower and, and the few people who could follow that kind of research. So the automatic attention score will also depend on the user base that is available. So if it's a very narrow user base, then the attention scores are likely to shrink. And this is what the authors of this paper found as well, and the editorials do better. And then again, there have been studies on open access to it's not accessible, then you can't really go into it. So uh, another important concept is uh, tweetations. So we need to get uh, to understand the language of Twitter here, um, because um, this uh, very popular and one of the earliest papers on the usage of social media for audit promotions studied um, um, this aspect uh, where tweeted articles, uh, especially within the first week of publication, those were highly tweeted, were 11 times more likely to be cited. So, um, and more citations on Google Scholar than Scopus. So they correlated better because Google Scholar typically samples um, uh, citations from various sources. And uh, whether the articles were tweeted because they were more cited, but uh, tweeting happened earlier, so, but of course causation has not been really studied, but an association is definitely documented. So, uh, so learning the language of Twitter beatations, this term was coined by in this article, which first came up in 2030, where uh, tweetations are described by any journal article, which is cited or mentioned in a tweet. So any tweet mentioning an article or having a DOI or, or a URL, that's a tweetation. So any tweet can also be called officially as tweetation, while the twin impact factor is a uh, number of tweets within the first seven days after the publication, which is said to be an extremely important aspect because it is more predictive for later citations, provided you adjust uh, for other confounding variables, which we'll also talk about in subsequent slides. And then to index is uh, the rank person style of an article within the journal compared to the first the past 20 articles. So suppose you have 20 articles and you have a twin index. 100 means it's the top ranked, highest ranked article compared to the previous 19 articles. Or if it's 95, then it's the second highest ranked uh, article. So leaving these aside, again, uh, bringing you to this concept of Twitter, if you look at the Twitter attention a published article gets, right after publication, there is a spike and people talk about it around two weeks and then it dies out, while the cumulative tweets gradually go up as expected. But this is your very narrow window of internet-based attention. Essentially, this is the make or break period where you uh, either make it or break it. And then here the authors look at the number of tweetations per article within one week. And those who had the highest tweetations, the highest tweetation is not best one person tweeting it again and again, but more people tweeting about it. And uh, those had this either double star or single star. So single star was uh, associated with a high citation that is uh, featuring the top percentile of citations on Google Scholar and the other one uh, for Scopus. So um, now uh, dissecting out the alt metric attention score, which we're going on talking about again and again, how is it calculated? Is it uh, just adding up all the components. Suppose your article is tweeted on 10 platforms, uh, just causing 10 platforms, that's you know, 10 times each is 100. Not really, it's not that simple actually. So um, there's some rules here, like uh, if I go and tweet one article seven times, it just records it as one event. So it has to be discussed by more than one person. And there's a weighted score. So uh, if your article features on a newspaper, 
then um, it gets a higher score, uh, around a weightage of eight, while blog posts is around three, and tweet is one, and Facebook posts is even lesser, it's one to five. So it depends who's talking about it and where it's being talked about, and newspaper mentions definitely get you a very high on metric attention score, but as you can think and believe, uh, newspaper mentions may not really translate into citations later. So that is why the um, relationship of uh, old metrics with citations is really tenuous. And um, another rule three is it uh, depends who's talking about it. So suppose one doctor talking to another, yes, that's important. They're discussing this article, this kind of an article, but if it's a journal account pushing the link, no, they're going to give it less weight. So AAS is calculated with a lot of variables in mind, and it is a weighted approximation of all the attention. This is the weightage that you get. Uh, news post is around eight, blog is five, and policy document is three, patents are again three, but most of the others are one. And the smaller platforms, Facebook is not really small, but it's 0.25 here, and Pinterest, so um, YouTube, all of these are carry less weightage. And also it's a game of rounded numbers, which makes it all the more complicated. So suppose the mention of Facebook by one person is 0.25, but it's rounded to one. But uh, if three people talk about it, again, it's 0.75, it still remains one. So um, it's hard to predict all these. Plus, uh, there's some modifiers. So suppose I posted a tweet, someone just retweeted. They did not really modify it or anything, just repost a second and then post it gets less weighted, 0.85. But it also depends on who's retweeting it. So suppose it's an influencer, a person who has got a lot of followers and they retweet, then it gets higher points. Also it depends on how often this person tweets about research output. So if this person is tweeting about research outputs, it's important. And if this person tweeting about a lot of papers from the same journal, no, this is a journal selling or this person sold to the journal, then it's a promotional intent and they'll get a less lower score. Publisher accounts are lower scores, and influencer account would be a higher score. So suppose uh, someone like Dr. Eric Topol tweets or uh, retweets a tweet, it will be higher score, and it may reach 1.1, 1 .1, so it will be rounded up to 2, so it's straight away double. So yeah, all these factors are considered. Uh, and layer thousand. So again, you guess when the authors of this paper, which is published recently by the social media. After that, they are planning for some redo surgery or something. Whatever is written in okay. essays, but I don't think you can understand it. So, colonoscopy is a colonoscopy. Plan, I say, like, I don't know why you have to do that. Colonoscopy is a colonoscopy. Rectal medicine will be there universally, 70 to 90 percent. Symptoms are 10 percent. So, if you do colonoscopy, everyone will do it. So, sir, what is the statistics? What is the statistics? So then he called me and told me, I explained the parent also. Admission karna hai, they will stay for one week, and at the end of the week, maybe next week, they will go and then after the two weeks. Because if you have a feeling they are already like last follower two, three months, yeah. Agar, if, if they don't come yeah. next week, then there will be a problem. So, they can stay. Uh, uh, they say, maybe, na. maybe there's some partial nutrition we can give. And, uh, Apologies for pausing, okay. but I think we need to mute someone there. Can someone identify that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, if it is more than seven or something, it's going to be less than seven, be less than five or something, then we'll admit. Otherwise, this uh, is even if you are not admitting, hmm. let him be around. And, uh, uh, till the stools are like changing color or something, uh, let him be around.
Okay, it is settled. So now we can play this. So, uh, first 14 days since publication, and after that, we'll look at the correlation. They only studied uh, articles from the top journals like Cell, Chama, Nature, many Science, and Lancet, and uh, they found a correlation with the number of citations. So, they said that the social media score um, tells us that journal impact factor and time are important covariates. And the articles in the top quartiles of the social media score were also in the top quartiles of citations. And the uppermost quartile of social media score was five times more likely to be in the highest quartile of uh, sites as well, while the off metric attention score did not show similar trends. And they also conducted a validation of the score on, on another data set and found similar results. And they said that probably uh, the all metric attention score alone is not predictive, but maybe contributed to citations when the confounding effect of other factors is adjusted for. So, um, by now you've got an idea that uh, the all metric attention is based on um, various factors. And this is exactly what the authors of this paper all just set out to study. So they broke down the um, components of the algorithmic attention score and uh, they included attention from various metrics, not just the AAS, but also they, I think, they took the Plumex and others. And this assigned a score of one to each. And they tried to see how do these components cluster in a large data set. So what is the pattern in which, which particular metrics tend to cluster together? And the results here were pretty interesting. So they found three distinctive clusters, as you can see here. Uh, this cluster, this particular one, had all the important metrics which uh, go hand in hand with the traditional uh, publication metrics and citations. They found citations on Crossref, on Scopus, and PubMed, and downloads. As we saw earlier, that they have some sort of correlation, they correlate the best. So these all clustered together, and even bookmarking the site you like. So again, this is a citation platform where you can bookmark. <clears throat> and then there's a platform, uh, this uh, cluster two, where um, you see blog lines, um, social bookmarking, XML downloads. So it's like just general platforms where you discuss stuff. And third one, very interesting, which actually gave them some insight is replies to no thread, researchblogging.com. So these are research platforms where, they, where the articles were being discussed in great detail. People were commenting on them. And there were responses to these comments. And all of these were captured in this cluster. And interesting that here the articles were discussed, but this is distinctive from uh, this cluster. Um, the citation cluster. So this led the authors to talk about the process of change or the transition. So um, also known as um, pathways knowledge translation. Uh, so this is uh, the stage of pre-awareness and awareness, agreement, adoption, and adherence. So uh, whenever there's a new piece of information, first you um, disseminate the knowledge and then information is processed and then people get the context and gradually it's adopted. Citation is like adopting or adherence. It's the final stage in accepting a piece of information. And so if you look at the dimensions of all metrics, they vary. So there are traditional impact factors like, uh, like citations and, and there is an active uh, component, which where people are discussing, absorbing and assimilating that information. And there's an inactive component where people just discuss it. It's just, they read it and go. So, um, so this uh, led to the hypothesis that maybe um, authors and even publishers may like to pay attention to this active group of metrics. So if articles are discussed more, they're also more likely they'll be part of the uh, process of transitioning to, uh, towards acceptance of the knowledge and adoption and adherence and also citation maybe. And publishers should probably more open to launch 
open peer review, even post-publication uh, and discussions on online platforms. So um, decoding this for you again, um, in simpler terms, if uh, you have newsworthiness in your data, that is the interesting or relevant findings, uh, there are many confounders which will determine whether your article is absorbed or rejected. So it's journal visibility, accessibility, that's open access, uh, social media strategy, whether they're even promoting or not, the audience, whether you have them in their followers or using the hashtags or not, and then your social media buzz, public attention, social change, all of these are all factors which will influence the social impact metrics which eventually are part of the transition into citations to some extent. Another important aspect is tweetations follow the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule that 80% of the target, like uh, this is in sync with the uh, Pareto principle in community fundraising, like most of the funds, 80% of the funds come from 20% of the people that we 80% of the popular tweets will come from just 20% of um, people are tweeting. So uh, you can really um, did it well, you can really do it well. And also at the placement order is another thing which may determine um, um, whether it's visible. So people have shown here in this uh, one of the paper published this year that rheumatoid arthritis among the rheumatic diseases papers from RA are more likely to be placed first in the journal and those which have placed in, in the rack out of the first three articles receive much more attention than the last three articles. And as you can see, their all metric attention scores are invariably uh, five points or more higher than uh, the last three articles. And also there's a disciplinary uh, impact. So uh, in this paper, people show that uh, the um, general papers or social science papers have better all metric scores. And again, there are three metrics, the societal metrics, should be like Facebook, blog posts, where articles are discussed, then research impact. Actually, it's very interesting that URL clicks and PDF downloads are highest for the social sciences, maybe because the science is um, more about reading and discussing literature. That is what the science revolves around rather than uh, working in the hospital or like that way. And intermediate metrics like Wikipedia, highest for lay public. And medicine scored low on all domains. So this is actually surprising, also a little uh, shameful, but then this is how it is. They comprise less than 10% of readers on Mendeley and other platforms, maybe because it's not the focus of their work and research is a secondary objective. So um, just before we uh, reach the end of our presentation, uh, this recent paper, which uh, was highly um, publicized and discussed and actually came as a surprise to me as well and challenged my uh, beliefs about all metric attention scores, which said that uh, tweets, tweeting about your research does not appear to influence citations. And um, yeah, it, it uh, is not a very good news for a social media editor. So I thought maybe we can uh, look at it closely. They used articles which were published in rheumatology and uh, from 2010 to 2015, and then they took the alternative attention score, and then they correlated it with uh, download citations and metrics. That's it. So that's what was done in this paper. And um, then, if you like to critically look at it, what may have maybe the reason for uh, these uh, results that there is absolutely no correlation, unlike a few other studies. So the articles were uh, from 2010 to 2014, and uh, period of low social media attention, then used total AAS, which we've gone, we've discussed in depth that this has its fallacies and may probably be broken down and looked at closely to identify the impact. So maybe this uh, conclusion may need to be re-examined, but uh, definitely uh, we need to look at greater means of increasing visibility as the AAS may not suffice. And, uh, so people are looking at uh, various means like infographics, podcasts, videos, uh, online journal clubs, and discussion threads. So uh, on similar lines, the study looked at original research articles and um, disseminated infographics followed by a four-week washout period and a crossover study to look at the impressions, retweets, and article uh, visits 
and they also use podcast promotion, which is really uh, seem like tedious task from this figure where it's a critical review, recording, editing, and then promotion, discussion, and then writing another review article on the podcast and peer review and publishing the summary. So a complicated process. But they found in graphics and Average. But the abstract views improved for the full text studies. Maybe uh, once people had a graphic, they felt more confident that yes, we know about the study now and they did not feel like reading the entire paper. So, this was an interesting aspect which needs to be looked at in great detail. And also, the number needed view was higher <laughs> for the infographics because, yeah, people do not go through the entire article. But the podcast was more similar to control articles. Another important aspect is that most data remains unsighted whenever you're analyzing. So look at this figure, like 85 to 90 percent of papers actually never have a citation and also never have an odd metric score, especially before in the period before 2014. And also after that, it's improving now. Though. And so when analyzing, it's best to just exclude those. And another aspect is um, articles with DOI are the one digital object identifiers. So they are the ones who cited in uh, scholarly research while a lot of uh, information goes around um, with high old metric scores has just URLs. So that may also be another reason for not getting citation for a lot of literature. So, um, the salient insights from all of these studies is that 2007 onwards there are more citations uh, and 2014 onwards there's more social media attention, there are also more studies on the subject. Um, DOI usage is increasing, so try to post the digital object identifier while sharing these articles on social media because uh, that will increase recognition. And uh, the uh, referencing practices and social media activities differ between communities. So, um, so that may account for two different uh, aspects of all metric attention, depending on your uh, donor is blue or red. Uh, so it will be cited or not. And then all metric scores depend on the audience of social media platforms. Also, not all information that you get on social media is valid information because uh, the authors of this paper looked at this common fragility index, which you may have heard about. That is, how fragile is your information, especially for an RCT? Like, what is the number needed to negate this information? And similarly, fragility quotient takes into account the number of sample size of the studies that will be required to nullify the results of the study. And uh, the authors of this paper uh, conducted this experiment on studies in bowel dysfunction and they found that most of the literature was fragile. So this is uh, true in today's world. A lot of literature is fragile but circulating and social media gives you similar attention. So here they use plumex metrics and uh, if it was an RCT, it had more attention irrespective of the quality and irrespective of the fragility index. So it suggests that we should probably have more fragility measures in our literature and uh, focus our attention towards more robust articles. So in short, these are the policies of the uh, altmetric attention score. Only the news, blog, policy, peer review, and a thousand components. These are four or five components that show meaningful correlation or slight correlation to citation count. And the weights may not be applicable to citation. They're just measuring your attention, which may not translate it to citation. So uh, in total, uh, today's take home is uh, you may like to have a look at this later that these are the diverse platforms and uh, they sample data from different sources and capture different aspects of attention. And AAS or all metrics means attention, but not necessarily quality. The outcome of attention depends on who's reading it. There is weak to moderate correlation with citations. But the pitfalls of uh, all metric attention score needs to be addressed. We need more metrics to synthesize robust indicators of valid research and specific scores to identify citation correlates. And the social media landscape is rapidly evolving with the shift to online reading and virtual learning. So there are new measures uh, which are coming up. There's higher attention. There's more shift to online learning. There may be a boost in all metric scores, which we haven't looked at yet. 
And also in the pandemic period, citations are also accrued quickly because a lot of literature coming up, uh, the sudden surge in the number of papers, so the dynamic of citations and all metrics may be set to change. It's something we would like to look out for in the near future.